Hi everybody. Here I have taken a problem. It is a two story frame which has some properties, say M1 and M2. I mean, the mass is given and stiffness K1 and K2 values are given. Basically, this two storied frame, it is two degrees of freedom system having free vibrations. So to get, I mean, to get this problem to be solved, we have taken, I mean, I have taken two storied frame of two degrees of freedom having lowers on two floors, giving equivalent masses M1 and M2. Already we know the value for M1 and M2. And these two values are on each floor. And this frame or this building frame we can idealize as a single column having concentrated masses M1 and M2 at the flow levels. Also here we have to consider that the slab or garden on the floors are infinitely rigid as compared to columns and the joints between girder and columns are fixed against rotations. We can see here also stiffness are given K1 and K2. And displacement at each floor. Displacement at each floor levels are considered as X1 and X2. Now assuming the body in motion in the direction of X positive. I mean in the direction of X we have to consider it is positive. I mean we have to consider body in motions and applying D'Alembert's equations we get equations of motions for each mass at any instant t under free vibration as these two equations. Now one important thing I want to say that if we mx double dot in this form it is inertia force. We can see it here inertia force here and here and restoring force if k with the displacement. It is restoring force. We can see it here all these are restoring force and here all are inertia force. Another important things we can see it here I have taken two representations First one, as I said, it is single column model representations of this frame and already it is the free body diagrams. For second one, it is multi-mass spring model, but both are equivalent. Both are equivalent. So equations of motions for this frame can be obtained. I mean these two equations can be obtained either using this free body diagram or this one. We'll get the same equations of motions. So let's move. How to use these two equations to create a matrix equation then to get our time periods and the model vectors of the frame.
all the values which are given as well as what equations we got I put on the left side so right hand side what I did from these two equations of motions I can write it in a matrix notation as this one so in these equations this is mass matrix this is stiffness matrix and this is acceleration vectors and this is displacement vectors in compact matrix notations I can write like this because this mass matrix it is capital M this stiffness matrix is capital K another important things here I want to say that if we look at this mass matrix it is a diagonal matrix because non-zero elements are only in the main diagonals if we look at this stiffness matrix we can see the elements of matrix stiffness matrix and these elements of matrix are designated as stiffness coefficients now let's move in the next slide to get more details now here these equations I put left but what I want now I want to put the value for m1 m2 k1 k2 so taking from here m1 m2 k1 k2 I get this equation now I have to solve this so what I'll do for free vibration of the undamped structure we seek solution of equation I mean solution of equation in the form like this we have to consider this form to get the solutions this is the form of solutions so if we do differentiate twice then it will be acceleration because this is displacement this is acceleration and right hand side will be like this now using this equation 2 and 3 if we put this equation 2 and 3 in 1 it will take this form this factor I took it out as common this sign terms I took out as a common because this sign term was for both terms now I will take this equation last equation in the next slide to get the determinant so what I will do this equation I had in previous slides I brought it here what I'll do factoring out sign terms and rearranging we get this but here one important things I have to do what is that because this is eigenvalue problem so it's non trivial if I consider this part is not equal to zero so surely this determinant of the matrix factor of this will be zero so I can write this part as zero now this one we have to use to find the quadratic equation this one so let's see in the next slide
Now, one important thing here, I want to consider lambda equal to omega square. The reason is I want to get the quadratic equation in easy term. Otherwise, here lambda square, here it will be omega to the power 4. Here also it will be omega to the power 4. That's why I am starting and considering lambda equal to omega square. So, I need to find the roots of this equation. How, how we got this? We need to see that first. This one, it means k minus m. We know this is k matrix and this is m matrix, mass matrix. So, this k matrix minus of mass matrix and mass matrix also it will be multiplied by omega square. Omega square means multiplied by lambda. So, equation takes this form. Now, from here, easy to get like this cross multiply and you can find this then this is our quadratic equations lambda square minus 25 lambda plus 50 equal to 0 we have to find the root of this equation so let's see in the next slide So I brought the equations. Now we can find the two roots. Lambda 1 equal to this. All of you know how to find the lambda. This is two roots. Now natural frequencies, how to get that omega 1 and omega 2. Already I, in previous slide I considered lambda equal to omega square so omega 1 will be square root of lambda so we got 1.48 radian per sec omega 2 4.78 radian per sec now we can find the time periods very easy to find 2 pi by omega 1 2 pi by omega 2 we got the time periods so let's move in the next slide to use all these values to find our results So here I brought this lambda 1 and lambda 2. So I have to consider first, first mode, considering first mode. So considering first mode, we can write the equation as this. Because first mode, how it is? Because it is with the lambda 1. So what you can do here very easy to solve only the thing is here we have to put the value for k1 k2 m1 and lambda 1 so surely it will appear like this then simplifying we can do we get this so this is our equations now we need to find the value for x1 and x2 so let's see how to do that So here, what do we write? We have to expand this. And we get homogeneous equation. There will be two equations. Let's see the first one. Assume x1 equal to 1. So x2 equal to 1.78. Now these two values, x1 and x2, we have to put in the second equation to see this left part coming 0 or not. And it will come. That's why I wrote here second equation to be satisfied by these two values x1 and x2. So we got it considering first mode. Now we'll consider the second mode.
consider in the second mode we got this here first mode I told already it was lambda 1 and lambda 1 here second mode so it will be lambda 2 and lambda 2 so putting the value for k1 k2 m1 and lambda 2 we get this equations with more simplification I mean this 40 minus this it will be minus 5.61 so we get this equation now we need to solve this to find x1 and x2 so let's see in the next slide So expanding this one, we will get these two equation using first one. But here we have to assume x2 equal to 1. Then we get x1. And putting these two value in second equation, it must satisfy. So we got two value. I did not put it. If you put it, I am sure it will satisfy. So we got the value, I mean this x1, x2. Now, from fast mode, we got these two from fast mode. Now we can use these two values here. So this is one, this is 1.78. For the second mode, we can get this. This is minus 3.56, this is one. So value of x1, x2 are known as eigenvectors. That is why I wrote here deformation characteristics under free vibrations. So x1, x2 are known as eigenvectors and we can write this form. And this phi, it is called a scaling vectors. So we got our solutions. I think that's all for this problem. So we are done.